Caroline Rurange, the foundress of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Mary of the Angels, was born on 11th March 1833 in the city of Bouquet, France. Her father, Captain Pierre Nicolas Rurange, joined the army and was honoured by King Louis XVIII, the Knight of Honour. Captain Rurange had six children. Caroline, being the eldest, had to take care of her younger siblings. It was a period of political unrest and heavy fighting between writers and the army. After the Civil War, Pierre Nicolas Rurange was relieved from the army and so the family moved along with Captain Rurange on his various postings. The year 1841 marked the beginning of a significant turn in the life of the eight-year-old Marie Caroline. During her pilgrimage to Ars, Father Jean Marie Vianney, a saintly priest moving midst the crowd from the confessional, stopped for a while and told her mother, Take care of this child in blue. God has special designs for her. Upon hearing these words, Caroline felt a strong vibration passing through her and held her mother's hand tightly. She realized that things would never be the same thereafter. Being the daughter of Captain Rurange, Caroline studied in St. Denis in Paris, a royal school meant for the education of the daughters of imperial officers established by Napoleon. She left excellent records of her academic excellence. Her mother's ill health and father's advanced age added to their financial crisis. In 1851, a wealthy and highly esteemed aristocrat, Marquise, proposed to marry her. Before accepting the proposal, Caroline consulted the curé of ours. Kneeling at the confessional, she waited for the window to be opened. When it did, the curé told her, Do not marry the Marquis proposed to you. God wants something else from you. Caroline was anxious and confused. In addition, the worldly pleasures did not matter much to her and so four years passed by. Yearning for an experience of God, in 1857, Caroline entered the Carmelite convent at Aix. She was edified by the life of Saint Teresa of Avila. Her novice mistress taught what renouncing her will really meant. She helped her to develop the virtues of humility and calmness of soul. However, her deteriorating health condition caused her to return home. Still, her longing for Christ became irresistible. So in 1858, she entered the Sacramentines congregation. There, she met Father Chrysostom, a Capuchin priest who was inspired by God to found a religious congregation where Jesus and Mary would be loved as never before. Once again, the situation did not turn in her favor. Her ill health compelled her to leave the convent. Her parents asked her to consider marriage. Caroline could not contain this defeat. She decided to leave the direction of her life completely in the hands of God and she waited in total surrender. In 1870, the Franco-Prussian War broke out. There came the urgent need to look after the war orphans. Caroline saw in this God's plan unfolding her. She confided to Father Chrysostom who requested her to wait for God's hour. 
this time God worked in her favor. On 30th December 1859 at Capuchin Chapel in Aix, Caroline received the habit of the Third Order of St. Francis from Rev. Father John Chrysostom. She was given the name Mary of the Cross. Having got her dream realized, she opted out to live an austere life. Even during bone-chilling winter nights, she would be praying, kneeling before the tabernacle. Her total submission and reliance on God began to bear fruits. God's plan for the Franciscan adorers and missionaries took place. The congregation of St. Mary of Angels was found at last. Having heard that Caroline's desire to help out, then Bishop of Angers, Monsieur Freppel approached her after consulting Father Chrysostom. Her path became definite and Caroline said goodbye to friends and family at Lyon. Gianni Gaudio joined Sister Mary of the Cross as her first daughter. They arrived in Angers in 1871. There, then Bishop Frappel entrusted them with the care of the orphan girls. More members began to join Sister Mary of the Cross. The third member, Miss Marie Margaret Renault, was given the name Mother Mary of the Assumption. On 2nd August 1871, on the day of the Feast of Our Lady of the Angels, Father Chrysostom presented the three sisters a simple garb of the postulants which would set them apart from the rest of the world. This day marked the foundation day of the Franciscans of Saint Mary of the Angels. Bishop Frappel also permitted the FSME the perpetual adoration of the most blessed sacrament even at night. On 20th February 1872, the sisters had their first night adoration as a community. Soon the number of the members joining the congregation began to increase. In view of generating the necessary funds for the maintenance of orphanage, Mother Mary of the Cross started a boarding school for young, well-to-do girls of Angers. Father Chrysostom always believed in the Abbey of Avier. A majestic Benedictine monastery would be the cradle of FSMA institution. On 12th August, the statue of Notre Dame Souterre was placed in the chapel of Evier. The beginnings had to encounter many challenges. But having experienced the power of a close communion with Jesus, their mother would encourage the young members saying, Do your adoration well. Help the poor. And I promise you success in your convent. The poverty never shook her faith. Still, she went ahead opening another boarding school at St. Servan. Her zeal for mission grew even in the midst of their starvation. She kept encouraging the younger members saying, When one loves, everything is easy. On 31st May 1880, Mother of the Cross and 30 daughters made their final profession and St. Mary of the Angels was truly established. FSMA then spread its branches steadily in France, UK, Switzerland and India. Twenty years after the foundation, there were about 130 sisters in six convents. 
Monsignor Frappel declared Mary of the Cross the superior general for life. On 12th September 1892, the first seven FSME sisters sailed to India in a ship called Amazon. On 3rd October 1892, the Franciscan sisters arrived in Mao. The new continent offered many hardships, like the epidemics, change of climate, food, language, culture and caste system. Some even lost their lives in the bloom of their youth. Their first mission in India began with contemplation and education as they were semi-cloistered. The sisters were guided to be the spiritual mothers to the students. She stressed on to say, be more mothers than mere teachers. From 1894, the FSME began recruiting the vocations from India. Gradually, they branched out to Ajmer, Khurda, Thandla and Mikhailpura. They serve in the fields of education, medical service, social welfare schemes and pastoral apostolate. Today, they are present in England, Ethiopia, Tanzania and Brazil as well. Mother Mary Chrysostom of the Cross formed her members into unshakable faith that will assist them to find God's will with obedience and humility. And above all, she remained a real mother to her daughters. She would surprise her sisters with gifts in their trunks as they move to another community or continent as per their tastes and needs. She also rendered her service to ordinary women by serving in the laundry, sharing their work and providing them coffee. She was an ardent devotee of Mother Mary. She emphasized that her members must adore Jesus through Mary since she is the only one who had seen the Eucharist with all its ascetical demands. She stressed on observing both internal and external silence, allowing God's Spirit to work and speak in them and through them. She never appreciated indifferences, flattery, undue rest and easy ways on the part of her daughters. Instead, she encouraged them to follow the simplicity of Jesus and Mary and fidelity to the spirit of FSMA. She fostered a life of communion and sisterliness among the FSMA members. Keeping up to a life of communion, she would tell her sisters that one catches more flies with a spoonful of honey than with a barrel of vinegar. After the death of Father Chrysostom, Mother threw herself in work, but her heart remained with the Lord. She believed that mere adoration and contemplation without taking up suffering like the Lord is not something pleasing to God. The evening of her life witnessed many hurdles, but she suffered them all in solitude. In 1987, the constitution of FSME was revised and approved by Pius IX. 
Mother Mary of the Cross governed the congregation for 31 years. In September 1910, she was detected for breast cancer. Mother accepted the news with peace. She prayed and suffered and made the superior to promise not to give her any painkiller as she wanted to carry the full weight of the cross. She blessed her sisters saying, Be true to my spirit, the spirit of our founders. On 8th August, Mother went triumphantly to meet her beloved. Today, the members of the FSME congregation carry on the legacy left by the Mary of the Cross. Their foundress with great zeal and dedication. Thank you, Mother Mary of the Cross. Today we are, because you were. We sing the Magnificat of your great legacy, which you have obtained for your FSME congregation to abide by. Mother Mary of the Cross, continue to be our inspiration.